Hello dear students today we'll discuss some of the spotters of upper limb So the first question is identify the pointed structure shown by yellow arrow what is it a branch of and what is its embryological significance So from the figure you can understand that it is uh, a dissected specimen of upper limb and the pointed yellow arrow shows an artery so this artery is known as anterior interosseous artery and you can see there it accompanies a nerve and that is known as the anterior interosseous branch of median nerve now the second part of this question is what is it a branch of so this is a branch of common interosseous artery which in turn is a branch of ulnar artery so uh, common interosseous artery is the largest branch of ulnar artery and it arises in the cubital fossa and on reaching the gap above the interosseous membrane this artery divides into anterior and posterior interosseous artery now you can see the pronator quadratus muscle here so what is the course of anterior interosseous artery it descends in close contact with the interosseous membrane uh, we said already that it accompanied it is accompanied by the anterior interosseous nerve which is a branch of median nerve and on reaching the upper border of the pronator quadratus muscle it pierces the interosseous membrane and then it goes backwards in anastomosis with the posterior interosseous artery in the back of fora and this artery gives off many branches uh, some branches supply the neighboring muscles some branches supply the nutrient artery to the radius and ulna and one important branch you have to remember is sometimes it accompanies the median nerve and that nerve, that branch is known as the arteria nervi mediana now the third part of this question is what is its embryological significance so you have to remember anterior interosseous artery is considered to be a remnant of axis artery of upper limb now the second question is identify the area pointed and write its contents so the question is the area pointed so you can see here this is scapula and you can see many intermuscular spaces so please try to understand the actual location of this space uh, so this the the person is lying in prone position and you have got the scapula here this is the back region with the scapula and the arm is extended here this is the skin flap of the region of the axilla that is reflected downwards so this is the uh, scapula this much is the scapula and this is the extended arm now let's have a clear look upon the spaces now uh, see the region marked by a b and c a and c are triangular spaces and they are a is upper triangular space and c is lower triangular space whereas b you can see it is a quadrangular space now we'll see the boundaries and contents of each space placing your fingers in this position is an easy method to learn the intermuscular spaces so once again a is upper triangular space b is quadrangular space and c is lower triangular space so now let's have a closer look upon the spaces the first space that is the a that is upper triangular space what are its boundaries you have got teres minor muscle above teres major muscle below then laterally you have got long head of triceps muscle and this is considered to be the base of the triangle whereas apex is formed by the lateral border of scapula where the teres minor and teres major muscle meet and the contents are circumflex scapular vessels which are branches of subscapular vessels next b is quadrangular space so the boundaries are above from before backwards you have got subscapularis muscle the lower part of capsule of shoulder joint teres minor below you have teres major then medially you have got long head of triceps laterally you have surgical neck of humerus now the structures passing through this region are 
axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral vessels so since you are having the surgical neck of humerus you know that the axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral vessels wind around this region so remember so these are forming the contents of the quadrangular space so next c is the lower triangular space and you can know that uh, above you have got teres major medially you have long head of triceps and laterally you have shaft of humerus whereas laterally in the case of quadrangular space it was surgical neck of humerus now for the uh, lower triangular space you have shaft of humerus now the contents are radial nerve and profunda brachii vessels so now you can clearly answer the uh, second question that is the area pointed as the upper triangular space and the contents are circumflex scapular vessels so we'll move on to the next question that is identify the joint which is shown by red arrow with its type and identify the pointed structure shown with yellow arrow and mention the site in which it is lodged so the joint here you know that you can see the scapula and the humerus so the joint here is a shoulder joint or you can say it is the glenar humeral joint and the type is ball and socket type of synovial joint now what is the yellow color pointed structure you know it is the tendon of long head of biceps brachii and that is lodged in the intertubercular sulcus or you can say bicipital groove so what is this intertubercular sulcus or the bicipital groove uh, it is located on the upper one third of uh, the humerus and you can see here we, we already said the one of the contents is the long head of biceps brachii whereas uh, you also have got ascending branch of anterior circumflex humeral artery and this the tendon of long head of biceps brachii is covered with this synovial sheath now this sulcus presents lateral and medial lips the lateral lip receives the insertion of the pectoralis major muscle whereas the medial lip receives the insertion of the teres major muscle and the floor for the insertion of latissimus dorsi so the chord for this is the lady between the two majors so the lady is considered to be the latissimus dorsi and the majors are the pectoralis major on the lateral lip and the teres major on the medial lip so uh, what are the articular surfaces of the shoulder joint so it, the articular surfaces are head of humerus and the glenoid cavity of scapula you can also expect a question about the stability of shoulder joint which is formed by two factors that is the muscular tendinous rotator cuff and coracoacromial arch this rotator cuff is formed by the tendons of four muscles which are referred to as sits muscles that is sits so they are supraspinatus above infraspinatus and teres minor behind and subscapularis in front all these four muscles form the rotator cuff and this cuff blends with the fibrous capsule and the inframedial part of the fibrous capsule is a weakest region and it is maximally stretched during abduction and there is a syndrome known as rotator cuff syndrome which is due to the complete or partial rupture of one or more tendons of the rotator cuff now what do you mean by the coracoacromial arch so this provides a secondary socket for the joint superiorly the so, coracoacromial arch means it um, it includes the tip of the acromion then the lateral surface of the coracoid process and connecting the, uh, both of these structures you have the coracoacromial ligament so all these structures together form the coracoacromial arch and this arch prevents the upward dislocation of the shoulder joint during abduction so that is the action of the coracoacromial arch so remember the two main factors which uh, maintain the stability of shoulder joint that is the tendinous or muscular tendinous rotator cuff and the coracoacromial arch if you are asked to mention about any clinical uh, aspects you can say about the anterior dislocation of the head of humerus which is more common in volleyball players swimmers and badminton players because we have already seen that the inferior medial part of the capsule is weakened so because of that the um, head of humerus can get dislocated which causes intense pain and because of this dislocation the axillary nerve can be damaged in this condition now another condition you have you can say is painful arc syndrome or 
also known as the impingement syndrome so this usually occurs in elderly and they complain of pain in the shoulder when they are attempting to put a jacket or put a shirt so this is characterized by mid abduction pain so that means the abduction up to the level of 60 degree is painless and further abduction from 60 to 120 degree is painful and after 120 degree again it is painless so only the mid region or the mid level abduction is painful this is because of the fact that the impingement of the solen supraspinatus tendon or the inflamed subacromial bursa under the coracoma acromial arch causes the pain during the mid abduction so that is the two reasons for the mid abduction pain that is the impingement of the solen supraspinatus tendon or impingement of the inflamed subacromial bursa under the coracoacromial arch so these two uh, applied aspects you can remember next question is identify the pointed structure write its morphology so you can clearly see the structure you are not seeing any muscles here so you you know that you can recognize it as the palm and this structure is the palmar aponeurosis the whitish color structure is the palmar aponeurosis and it is considered to be the degenerated tendon of palmaris longus muscle palmar aponeurosis helps to improve the grip of the hand and it also protects the nerves and vessels of the palm one clinical condition you have to remember is dupuytren's contracture this is a condition in which the medial part of the palmar aponeurosis undergoes progressive shortening and this exerts pull on the little and ring fingers causing flexion deformity in them so the treatment is fasciotomy that is surgical cutting of the shortened part of aponeurosis in order to straighten the bent fingers so the next question is identify the pointed structure and mention its nerve supply and one clinical importance so uh, you can identify the shape with the shape itself you can say this is that deltoid muscle and its nerve supply is axillary nerve and the function is or the clinical importance is intramuscular injection you take this site for intramuscular injection so we saw uh, the muscle as deltoid and it's triangle it's triangular in shape and you can see it has got a v shaped origin so the anterior fibers are arising from the anterior margin of lateral one third of clavicle whereas the middle or acromial fibers are arising from the lateral margin of acromion and the posterior fibers are arising from the lower lip of crest of spine of scapula and where is it inserted it is inserted into a v shaped deltoid tuberosity which is on the lateral surface of the humeral shaft now i already said the nerve supply is axillary nerve what is the root value that is c5 c6 and usually the question asked along with this is any other muscle that is supplied by the axillary nerve you can say that is teres minor muscle now what are the effects of uh, paralysis of the deltoid so you know that the rounded contour of the shoulder is maintained by the uh, deltoid muscle and the action the main action is that it helps in abduction of the arm from 15 to 19 deg 90 degree and that is mainly contributed by the middle set of fibers whereas the anterior fibers helps in flexion and medial rotation of arm whereas posterior fibers help in extension and lateral rotation of arm whereas the middle set of fibers that is the acromial fibers helps in abduction of arm from 15 to 90 degree so if there is any damage to the axillary nerve the abduction of the um, arm from the 15 to 90 degree will be lost because of the paralysis of the deltoid root value of axillary nerve is c5 c6 axillary nerve is also known as circumflex nerve and this is a branch of posterior cord of brachial plexus some more points you have to remember regarding the axillary nerve the trunk of the axillary nerve gives off articular twig to the shoulder joint and then it divides into anterior and posterior branches the anterior branch supplies the anterior margin of deltoid muscle and uh, and also some cutaneous branches supply the skin over the lower part of deltoid now the posterior branch gives a twig to the teres minor muscle 
and this uh, to, uh, bears a connective tissue swelling and that is known as pseudoganglion. So the nerve to torus minor that is the posterior branch of the axillary nerve has got a connective tissue swelling uh, and that is known as pseudoganglion. And it then it supplies the posterior part of deltoid and then the posterior branch continues as upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. So the twig to teres minor consists of the pseudoganglion and the rest of the posterior branch supplies the uh, posterior part of deltoid and it continues as the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Now one peculiarity you have to remember that the axillary nerve obeys Hilton's law. So what is Hilton's law? Hitler's uh, law states that a nerve which gives articular branch to the joint supplies the muscles which act on the joint and supplies the skin in the vicinity of the joint. That means the axillary nerve gives articular branch to the shoulder joint. So this axillary nerve supplies the muscles which act on the joint. So we said about deltoid and also supplies the skin in the vicinity of the joint. We told about the cutaneous supply. So that law is known as the Hilton's law and the axillary nerve obeys the Hilton's law. So the axillary nerve can be damaged in case of uh, surgical neck of humerus fracture or in case of anterior dislocation of the head of humerus that we have discussed before. Now we already said that if there is any weakness of delta that can lead to inability to abduct from 15 to 90 degree and also loss of rounded contour of the shoulder. And uh, since the axillary nerve also supplies a torus minor muscle, uh, there will be weakness of lateral rotation of arm also. Now, the sensory loss is also there, and this is usually seen on the outer aspect of the lower half of deltoid, and that is referred to as the regimental badge anesthesia. So I hope all these topics are clear for you. We'll come up with the further questions in the coming sessions. Thank you.